I again, everybody, thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two, as Art and I talk to the fabulous Hollywood historian, Manny Pacheco. Manny, great to see you again. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Hey, Manny. So I have a question for you, and I know that we've spoken uh, offline uh, about a lot of different people, but one of the ones, I do a lot of crossword puzzles, and one of the 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 answers that come up all the time is either Ida or Lupino. And it's one of the, it's of, of all of the puzzles I do, Ida Lupino, and but it's never Ida Lupino. It's either Ida, Ida or, or Lupino. Lupino. Okay, it's right. always <laughs> like every fifth or sixth puzzle I do. What is about Ida Lupino that she's now sort of like the darling of the crossword puzzle set? You got me on that one. I I, I didn't know that. <laughs> But I will say that she's going to be one of the chapters in my upcoming book uh, that I hope to get out soon called The Adventures oh, of The Adventures of Forgotten Hollywood Forgotten History. Mm. <laughs> well, she's not forgotten and, in my world. No. no so Ida Lupino is a really uh, really special and for a lot of reasons. I can give you some information about Ida today that's going to be featured in my book that's never been talked about ever. One is that she was born in London or, or born in England. And so she's British. And you wouldn't know that with that hard boiled attitude, that Warner Brothers hard boiled attitude of the of the yeah. girl of the gangster. But she was actually British, born to a family of actors. And uh, like Lionel Barrymore, did not want to be an actor. She preferred the idea of getting into the show business, but from behind the camera. Uh, maybe as a director or a writer of film, that was her. That was her goal. And as uh, she had an uncle that was British and had some connections in Hollywood, and uh, got her uh, a couple of doors open. Next thing you know, she's uh, cast. Uh, she's actually hired and and signed to a contract at Paramount. Uh, except something happened that nobody ever talks about. And as you know, I this is kind of a a pet project of mine to bring these kinds of things to light, which is that Ida Lupino contracted polio. Hmm, no kidding. Really? But it was not severe. She never lost her ability to walk, but she was very well aware of the disease for the rest of her life and fought and campaigned against uh, and looking for the solution of polio hmm. at the wow. time. And so, yeah, I mean, no, nobody knows this because she wasn't afflicted to the point where she wasn't able to to walk. Uh, but but it did help her make a couple of decisions as she was recovering. Well, number one, she lost her she lost her contract at Paramount <laughs> because of it. Uh, but number two, as she was um, as she was recovering, she started doing a lot of writing. Uh, and, and wrote actually musical compositions that have been featured by symphonies across the world, which, again, nobody knows. Uh, and um, she decided that if her career got going, that she would put her foot down and really establish herself as a writer and director of films and, and wanted to start her own production company. Which, oh. which she did. Right. Eventually. Which she did. Yeah. Which she did. But that's getting the cart before the horse. She had to first establish herself. And fortunately, you know, even though she lost her, her contract at Paramount, and I'm not sure that Paramount was a good fit for her, but Warner Brothers was an absolutely perfect fit for her. Yep. Uh, she was able to be cast as um, wicked women yep. in wildly interesting roles in High Sierra. Uh, also, um, she was uh, a cast with Ann Sheridan and Humphrey Bogart and George Raft in uh, They Roll by Night. Yes. Uh, really wonderful, wonderful films in which she just plays crazy women. Uh, and, and then, of course, she was in Out of the Fog with John Garfield. And all of a sudden, she was able to go into uh, Jack Warner's office and demand better roles. And there, again, she not talked about often because the, the, the names that are often mentioned with this were Betty Davis sure. and Olivia de Havilland. But I, Ida Lupino was very big on the idea of getting cast in more interesting films. And she was not satisfied with the work. She, and she turned down a lot of roles. Well, I, lot. Well, I think that I know her mainly from television. 
Um, yes. And yes, so, so although I know I, I've seen some of her films, um, mm -hmm. I don't think I, it ever stood out to me as it did uh, as a viewer of television, the Idol of Pina show yeah. and a whole bunch of other things that she did, which I don't even, I think she was associated with a lot of things where she wasn't necessarily even on screen. Is that correct? John, was there an Ida Lupino show? I don't remember uh, that. I, you know, I don't think so, but she was in a series. <laughs> yeah. And I can't tell you what it was. She was in a series with a well-known actor. Well, her husband um, for Duff. I, I don't know what it was, but it was I, my, yeah. unlike Art, my reference to Ida Lupino was that tough girl from the Warner movies. Yes. Um, mm. Gorgeous woman, uh, t played tough and... Uh, and yet lovable and uh, very gritty, heart, heartbroken, all at the same time. Right. I just loved her. And I was surprised when all of a sudden I never heard of her again. Where did she go? Why? She was still young. And the answer was, I found out that she started directing. Right. And she became very prolific in um, film law. And she was considered a bit of a, a looking back by folks like Truffaut, Francois Truffaut, yeah. Uh, who, who revered, by the way, Alfred Hitchcock for his auteur theory, which was the idea that I will be in charge of my film, not the producer, but the director. Right. Well, prior to Alfred Hitchcock's real command of that, Ida Lupino had a bit of that herself. She wanted to be known as the director of the film, and she wanted to be able to con control every aspect of the film, and which she became really good at, believe it or not, was product placement. She she was one of the first directors that would take a film, a real gritty film, and make sure that a Coke can would appear at the right time. And the reason for this is because she needed the money to make these films because That's she was also the, she was part of a production company she <laughs> owned. So she had to raise funny. the money. So she became really big on product placement, which. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, one of one of my favorites of hers was The Hitchhiker with Edmund O'Brien, and yeah. Uh, yeah, that was that was really good. Yeah. And um, I don't remember his name, but the villain was the guy who played uh, the the lawyer who lost to Perry Mason every week, Hamilton Berger. Yeah, Tomlin. Tomlin. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but anyway, that was The Hitchhiker. That was one of her best films, I think. But then to Art's point, she later needed to get into television. Obviously, her production company wasn't making enough money. She married Howard Duff, and she became known mm. for two really fabulous roles. One, her uh, collaboration, and I say collaboration because she was not only a star in one of his episodes, but she directed one of his episodes as well, and that was The Twilight Zone. Mm. Ah, yeah, because very interesting. Uh, yeah, Rod Serling uh, absolutely recognized her directing chops and so asked her to direct uh, one of the features, but he also wanted her as an actress and yeah. put her in and put her in uh, in a very Gloria Swanson-esque kind of Sunset Boulevard role that was really really good. Yeah. And and then later she appeared with her husband as one of the really cherished villains on Batman. <laughs> mm, that's interesting. I don't think I, I saw don't that. About it. No. Yeah. yeah. And but she but she throughout the sixties she was very prolific in, in, in a lot of roles. I mean, I, I would imagine she would have been perfect had it not been Jane Weinman in, in the part. Uh, yeah. the matriarch in Falcon Crest. I, I can you imagine Ida Lupino in Falcon Crest? She would have just oh. been magnificent. She would have been great. Finish. Yeah, she would have been very villainous. But, you know, you can't, who they eventually cast is who they cast. And it was still a very, very good show. Yeah. But Jane, uh, Ida Lupino really had a, a five decade career. You're right, uh, John. She, she disappeared because she understood that uh, she needed to write and she needed yeah. to direct. And she was still composing works for, for, uh, for symphonies as well. She That's really awesome. was a true auteur in, the, in every mm -hmm. sense of the French word. And um, she's going to be in one of my upcoming, my, my next book. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled to, to feature Ida Lupino here on Celebrating Act Two as well. Thank I'm you. looking forward to, to reading that chapter of your book. She was a very well-respected director, yes. even though I never knew what happened to her. And a pioneering female director as well. Yes.
Yeah. So, so the, the book that. is called Adventures of? Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, yes. And when, <laughs> and, uh, when should that uh, grace the, uh, the bookshelves? Well, I'm, I'm busy writing its final chapters. I got about four or five more chapters, but I've written already about 16 chapters. So I just need about four or five more and then it'll be done. So I'm, I'm busy writing. I, I keep busy, as you know. Yeah. And uh, But the Ida Lupino chapter is done and I'm very proud of that chapter. So I thought it'd be nice to, to chat about yeah. her. And uh, maybe I may have to revisit the chapter to throw in some information about crossword puzzles. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Manny. <laughs> you got it. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.